This is a legacy episode of the Lesbian Historic Motif podcast, originally released as part of the Lesbian Talk Show podcast group. Some references may be obsolete. The show looks at lesbian-relevant themes in history and literature, has interviews and discussions about current historical fiction with queer female characters, including fantastic versions of the past, and presents new original historical fiction for your enjoyment. This week, we welcome back author Kelly Ayton to talk about some historically-based stories with queer women that she's particularly enjoyed. Glad to have you back, Kelly. Hi, it's glad to be back. Thank you. So let's dive right into the books. What would you like to tell us about? Okay, as a a, a warning, I am not normally a historical fiction fan. However, I do love books that put a lot of detail or dive into different historical periods that I'm a fan of. So... I'll start with the two books that are kind of not not a speculative fiction base because that is my typical fandom. So one of the books I'd like to talk about is Other Girls by Diane is it Aries. In Other Girls, it's actually set around 1978. So again, it's I, I picked up this book early on. It's uh, decades ago, decades, two decade and a half maybe. <laughs> I picked it up fairly early on in my in my lesbian fiction uh, collection. I haven't been collecting that long, but it's set at Willard College for Women uh, around 1978. And you have, uh, it's really just a big, it's all women. And it's just kind of a big gay, every, every iteration of a lesbian relationship. I mean, it kind of throws everything in there. You know, when you have all these women together, you know, you have a upper class woman, you know, who's having an affair with her, her feminist professor uh, and then sleeping with her and do- erogenous roommate, you know, it's then you have this this younger woman coming in and the, the upper class woman, Pip. She is her uh, big sister, right, uh, who they're drawn together. And I have to say that one of the things uh, the story is it's a good sized novel. The story was really engaging. There's an emotional roller coaster and, you know, it has some sad parts and, and you know, you know, attacks and and it's it's supposed to be a happily ender happily ever after after ending but it's like you know you kind of wish that some of the other characters had ended up together instead of the ones that did (laughs) i i just i just know that after i read sometimes when i read the historical fiction especially some of these ones set in like the 70s and 80s um i they're not as happy as i like so while they're amazingly written uh, i find them very good engaging novels they're not necessarily my favorites because to be a favorite typically I like that happily ever after, which I know seems trite, but. Well, so I'm curious about that because, and of course, here's where I'm coming from. I'm I'm counting back, set in the 70s, 40 years ago. I guess, I guess that is historical fiction. Wait a minute. I was in college in the 70s. (laughs) So, and, and I'm wondering, is it that there's a particular type of happy ending you're looking for that maybe wasn't as possible back then. I'm not sure when this book you're talking about was written. So was it written recently talking about a historic era or was it written in the 70s? No, it wasn't written recently. It was written in 2002, which, you know, Hmm. 16 years ago still. So, um, so it's not, it's, it's contemporary. It's 2002, but it is written about 1978. Um, Uh And you're, you're absolutely right. And I think maybe that's why some of the more accurate books written about a certain time period, I'm not necessarily as happy with. Because to, to me, before women, before lesbians, bisexuals, transgender, queer, before you started seeing all of these rights, and we do have, I mean, we still obviously have a ways to go, but we have so many more rights now than you had 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago or more, right? I mean, just looking uh-huh. at the age of when women themselves had rights, and now you start looking at like as gay women or, you know, mm-hmm. or c- queer women. Um, you know, it's a different time period now than it was in the 80s or in the 70s. Um, but you're right. You're absolutely right. And maybe that's why some of my my displeasure with some of these more accurate portrayals of, of historic fiction as far as during the time period when women had rights as women, but they weren't necessarily they didn't have rights as gay women. And so the endings aren't as much what I would like to see, you know, knowing what I know now, but I, but you can't, you can't have that. Yeah. It, 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 this is, 
a, a reaction that I've run across about, you know, historical fiction further back, where modern readers say, you know, I don't like the options that were available to women back then. I don't enjoy these stories because I don't want to read about anybody who doesn't have what I have now. And it's it's fascinating because, of course, that's that's true for any kind of historical fiction. And and it I find it, well, I have to confess, I find it frustrating when lesbian readers say, I don't want to read historical fiction at all because I, I would not want to live then. And therefore... I don't like these stories. And and I've always seen historical fiction as a chance to understand how people could be happy on their own terms in any context. But that's that's a, a you know a thing I've got uh, that uh, is, is just interesting thinking about how my life in the 70s, well of course let's not talk about my life in the 70s. But, <laughs> but my life in the 70s is not something that a you know say 20 something lesbian today would consider acceptable if lesbian romance means you have to you know get married and live happily ever after it's like you can't set anything earlier than the last decade you're right and i think i think it comes down to uh, relatability right i mean it's hard for the younger generation with everything they have to relate to that time period and and maybe they don't want to relate because it's to have all of these privileges and all of these rights and to suddenly go back because you do put yourself into a book. When I, when I read, Mm -hmm. I am in that book. That is me. That's my time. And to have all of these rights abruptly ripped away because suddenly you're in a time period where you're treated terribly or you're not allowed to openly love who you love. It's hard and it can be hard. And I think that's why some people maybe avoid, but there are other, like you said, there are reasons. It cuts us off from our history. Yes. I mean, I, I, I shouldn't be like, you know, preaching to you about this, but it's, it's just, it's up for me as being so interested in the history of, you know, non-normative sexuality, that it was different. It wasn't the same as what we experience. But to cut ourselves off from that is to, to take away our history entirely. I, I agree. No, I, no, I really agree. Um, I think that one of the things that if you don't occasionally take a look back to see what we didn't have, you won't appreciate what we have now and you will, will stop fighting to gain more, to really mm-hmm. be equal, right? Um, you're like, right. oh, this is good. We have a good. We don't have to worry. We can get married. It's all great. Well, it's not great. People are still getting fired from jobs. You know, they're threatening women's rights daily. So I think if you don't look and see how much fight we had to do just to get here, you you forget how to fight. Because uh, his, history is about showing the fight that people had as humans, as women, to get where they are now. It's, mm-hmm. it's a constant change. Um, and I think that actually takes me into the other book, uh, huh. which is Alma Mater by Rita Mae Brown. Um, Mm -hmm. Rita Mae Brown obviously is a a classic, right? Um, I read Ruby Fruit Jungle, um, again, and when I read Ruby Fruit Jungle, it's, it's, you know, a great book, well written, but it didn't even stick with me so much because it's, for me, it was hard to relate to. It was set, you know, in a time period that was hard for me to relate to. I remember reading Alma Mater though, and I really loved the book. And then I got to the end and the book was well written, but for me, it was not a satisfying end. Um, because at the time, it's, that one's set in 1980, so two years after Other Girls. It's set in the time period, 1980, and still, women didn't have these options, you know, and you, you think of it as barbaric now, but women, they were expected to get married, you know, have your little dalliance on the side, but you need to maintain the family name, and, and some of it is just a trope, right? But mm-hmm. still, it, it had that, that implication that women were worth less unless you settled with a man. And it was mm-hmm. hard for me to imagine happiness if it if I was forced to include settling with somebody I couldn't love romantically. So mm-hmm. both really good books. I mean, I, I recommend them because they're great books to read. They weren't uh-huh. necessarily an ending to my taste, but they were very good books. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, they're on my list. So yeah. <laughs> um, uh, after that, I... The rest, the rest of the books that I have on my list, as far as some favorites, they are not historical fiction, necessarily. They are maybe a variety, fantasy, 
Cinder and Smoke by Jen Cannon is set in the 19th century and 19th century New York. And it's about a female criminal who she kind of has to make her own family. Uh, she's a thief. The, the police call her the smoke um, because she's been targeting the wealthy. Um, she was born in prison, stolen from her mother, raised by runaways and pickpocket. And uh, she meets her match in Pinkerton agent Shelby Button. Uh, who earned the moniker Cinder for running away, running into a burning building to capture a criminal, right? So obviously it's not completely accurate. You, w- you wouldn't have a female Pinkerton at the time, but it's set in that time. So it's it's kind of like a mystery. It's kind of... So Cinder and Smoke, it set in 19th century New York. Um, it's about this female Pinkerton who's trying to catch the smoke, which is a, a pickpocket, a, a thief, so, and it's about, that is another book that the ending wasn't necessarily um, to my preference, but it is an excellent, writ- excellently written book. Um, you, you really, the author paints a great picture of 19th century New York, that the way they spoke, the, the clothing they wore, just what life was like. And, uh, and so, you know, again, it's, it's, set in the past it's not necessarily my thing and it and you don't necessarily have an ending that you would look at a contemporary piece and say oh this is a happy ending um but i think it does a good job of of showing these two women um and showing like their what they're facing together they're it it almost has a uh uh jean valjean and Javert, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like that, that, yeah, that and, dynamic. Yeah, and, and John Cannon uh, specializes in, um, I think, later 19th century, you know, they're, they're not literary historical stories, but they, no. most of them are more historical than fantasy, I think, that uh, yeah. just, just very adventure, genre adventure more. Yes, I agree. Um, so this one really stuck out because it was set. I mean, uh, Jen Cannon has a couple others uh, that were more adventure, almost like a like a Lara Croft, uh, Indiana yeah. Jones kind of adventure. Yeah, with yeah. The, you know, uh, so those ones I think are more almost steampunk, uh, but mm-hmm. also set uh, in probably what 19th century, but more London, I think. Yeah. Um, so just really good books, uh, not necessarily romance, adventure for sure. But just reading the dynamic between the, the Pinkerton and the thief in Cinder and Smoke is, is well worth it. And just seeing that time period come alive with Jen Cannon's words, um, mm-hmm. it's, it's just truly amazing. Um, another one I have, let's go back further, Medieval Europe during the Black Plague, 1349. That one is by Kim Prytel, Prytico, by It's called Storm. Okay. It is not, I mean, I've read some comments. It's not oh, well, you wouldn't have had this during the plague. I mean, I wouldn't say it's 100% accurate historical fiction, but, you know, they try. It's it's uh, it's definitely on the verge of fantasy because of uh, uh, you have Marin, a thief, a, thief, a street rat, um, and mm-hmm. Kara, a village girl. Uh, they kind of end up traveling together. Kara is a, a healer. She was trained by her mother. Her mother died of the plague. Her sister died of the plague. And they kind of travel together when they're younger, they fall in love, and uh, something happens and they get separated and they meet again years later. So it's really, at the beginning, it's set during the time of the plague. And, uh, and it comes back later where uh, Marin, Marin's life has changed significantly. She has much higher status. Again, it's, it's fantasy in that you're not going to see many female like knights or people that are ruling an area. Mm-hmm. But it is still... Um, if you like a medieval time period piece, uh, if you like some of the details and the gruesome, gory facts about <laughs> like what it's like to die from the plague, then you know it's a good it's a good read if you like to go that far back. It's I believe the Kim's story was originally a an Uber Xena fan fiction, so the mm-hmm. descriptions of the two main characters may seem familiar, um, mm-hmm. but the story itself I found highly entertaining. So. Even if it's not strictly historically accurate, um, there's a lot of detail in it. Mm-hmm. So another one that is like a fantasy, it's set contemporary, but then it has continuous flashbacks to the late 1600s, uh, Cobb Island uh-huh. by Blaine Cooper. I don't know if you've read that one. Um, okay, I'm not familiar with it, but the name sounds at least familiar. So you have uh, older sisters are agree to supervise like 
their younger siblings, a couple of young lovestuck teens, right? So they go to this house on Cobb Island. And what happens is the two older sisters end up being descendants of the star-crossed lovers from the late 1600s. So they keep okay. having flashbacks to the 1600s to these two women that were living then and um, all the things that happened to them. The one, I'm trying to remember, I think the one was married and then the other one, they were star-crossed. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's late 1600s. It's not going to turn out well necessarily. <laughs> but, it, but it has a lot of these flashbacks to the time period, to, you know, what they were, the house that they were living in on this island and, you know, what they were going through at the time because obviously women couldn't be together. But it also set contemporary with the, the, the two the two chaperones, inadvertent chaperones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and it's just, you know, one of those fate things where the two women just happen to be descendants of the original two women that had died on this island in the late 1600s. So I always thought that that was a pretty interesting uh, a dynamic going back and forth like that. It wasn't set solely in ancient history. Yeah, that's a, a technique that, that I see regularly in lesbian historicals where I... I tend to call it time slip, but I, I don't know if that's like a term that other people use, where, where you're connecting the reader to the story of via a modern character, but then either past lives or sort of a astral projection type time travel type thing, and you get into the history. It's kind of fun that, that that's an entire genre of that. Yeah, I've, uh, I have actually heard a time, I've heard time slip as well. Um, mm-hmm. But you're right, there, there are quite a few books that do that, even not just in lesbian fiction, but in contemporary fiction. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at... Well, Outlander. Outlander, <laughs> right. I mean, my, my girlfriend, uh, fiancé, sorry, my fiancé now, um, she loves Outlander. She reads the books, she watches the show. <laughs> so uh-huh. um, I just ignore it. I'm like, <laughs> she's like, I don't like fantasy books i'm like oh what's this story about oh it's about this woman that goes back in time i'm like okay you can stop there uh (laughs) i don't like romance books oh what's it about oh this woman that falls in love with this man and goes back in time and i'm like okay you can stop there so yeah but you're right it is a very popular genre and i think it's i think it's the way for the author to connect people that don't want to connect with history like kind of against their will and draw them Uh in in a subtle way you know um so I have two more. Uh, this one, it's just a quick mention. It's uh, the series Balance of Forces by Ali Valley. Um, in the first book, you have uh, this, this main character, Kendall Rishou, or Rishou. Um She actually began life in ancient Egypt as the only female pharaoh. And I know it's not like a dedicated historical fiction, but one of the things I loved about this book was the references to the Egyptian... Uh, some of the Egyptian mythology, Egyptian culture, stuff like that. I thought that was just kind of cool. Uh-huh. It's just a tiny little, tiny little blip on the radar there, and I'll move on from that. And uh-huh. the other series, which I don't even know what this genre is, uh, when women were warriors. Uh huh. Have you have you read those ones? Yeah, that series. Um, I I haven't read them, but uh, if you look at the initial acknowledgments, I get a mention for uh, providing her with some name research. <laughs> is it ancient so. Celt? Is it... it is inspired by maybe Bronze Age Celtic society, but it's it's my interpretation is it's much more um, much more fantasy than historical, but yes. but inspired by uh, that era, definitely. So I remember reading this book. I actually read this book, the series, before I wrote any of my books, mm-hmm. and I remember just being blown away by how good this author was. And, you know, for a lot of people that, you know, I, I've seen some people are like, ah, I didn't like it. It was too slow. There wasn't enough action. But for me, it was just a wonderful look into the life, uh, the day to day life, the things that the the, um, that the character had to go through, you know, uh, ta- Tamaris, uh, just the, the different things that she had to go through. And it's kind of set in like an, uh, an ancient time period. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not it's not modern, but it just it just really reminded me of the ancient history. And I think it 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 helped me with the world building and the putting all of those details in uh, mm-hmm. and the things that I appreciate when I do read a historical fiction type book, which is the details and 
and just set the scene for me. Create uh-huh. this world for me so that I'm there and I can imagine myself there where normally you wouldn't be able to do that if it's something that is historical fiction and you can't relate. So I really yeah. think it helps. She did a great job at setting the scene and bringing me into this world that was so very different from my own. Uh-huh. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for sharing some book love with us. And I'll put <laughs> links to all the books you mentioned into the show notes. All right. Thank you very much. Um, it's It's been wonderful to discuss some of my book loves. I will always discuss book loves. So if somebody contacts <laughs> me and they're like, well, what is your favorite book? Or be prepared for long conversations. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Lesbian Historic Motif podcast. See the show notes for links to people and topics. Most shows will have a transcript linked as well. If you have a book announcement, a topic suggestion, or might like to appear on the show, please drop me an email. If you enjoyed this podcast, please rate it and subscribe on your favorite podcast app, and consider supporting our Patreon 